tripod was about to fall over. My name is Kenneth. I talk about the stock market, dividends, investing, day trading, swing trading, money. So if you're interested in any of that, hit all the buttons if you wish. But I got two messages within the last month. And when I got the first one, I was like, man, I want, I have an idea for a video, but I don't know where to take it. I need something else. And in, within the same month, I got another DM from somebody else on a different topic. And I know this is going to be a departure uh, from my normal technical analysis, um, you know, fundamental analysis, should you invest in this, talking about money kind of thing. It's more of like a motivational video that I want to make. Um, and I'm going to be taking both of these messages and, and, and trying to maybe, I don't know, motivate you or just talk about the overall process. So the first message that I get was from this guy and he says, hey, I think you're doing great. I've never heard of you. I've never seen you before. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, like the RKO, and I got to make a wrestling reference. Out of nowhere, you're everywhere. You're on TikTok, you're on YouTube, you're on Instagram. Who I never heard of you before, um, but I guess someone had told him about me and he started looking me up and he was like, man, this guy's everywhere. And he was like, I love it. Keep it up. And I was like, I was like, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm, I appreciate the compliment, but I'm not out of nowhere. I've been doing this for the last five years. And he was like, whoa. And I was like, and, and more than that, sometimes when you have a beard, mustache hairs, sorry. Um, I could probably edit this out, but I'm too lazy. It's not just what you're seeing in the last five years of me getting on social media. You know, I got on YouTube first because some friends were asking about the stock market. So I filmed a video. And then I was like, well, I can promote this video on Instagram. So I got on Instagram. And the whole intention, I never wanted to be famous. I never wanted to be a content creator or an influencer or any of that. I just wanted to help people. And I got fired up when I saw all these gurus saying, pay me, pay me, buy my course. And I was like, man, there's gotta be someone out there out of the, like, the goodness of their heart who just wants to share their knowledge and isn't trying to profit off of people. Um, and I think that person ended up becoming me. And there are many others. But I, I saw that as a space that I could fill. Um, and it was something that I had wanted when I first started, but didn't really exist 13 years ago. So I was glad to fill this void on social media. But after about a year, I was getting nowhere. I had 50 subscribers on YouTube, under 200, uh, not 200,000, just under 200 on Instagram. And my whole point was to help. And I wasn't helping anybody because nobody was watching, nobody was commenting, nobody was engaging, nobody was messaging me. I was about to quit when someone said, get on TikTok. And as you know, if you know my story, 200,000 followers later in the last four years, incredible. But YouTube and Instagram, man, they've been taking a lot longer to grow on. Suddenly overnight though, something does seem to be happening. It's like there was like some sort of shift <laughs> overnight. Um, Cause I just said nothing happens overnight. Um, but it's been that consistency. But yeah, Instagram, all of a sudden I had 2,800 followers like days ago. Now I'm over 6,000. YouTube, I could not grow. I was getting 20 subs a month. I focused, I put my nose to it. I was like, let's go on YouTube. Um, and I set a goal. It was ambitious, but not too ambitious. I was at 9,800 in November. I said, I wanna hit 10,000 by the end of the year. And I hit 10,000. Uh, December 8th. So with 23 days to spare. So when you focus on something, you can do it, but you can't just manifest. Man, oh, I want, I want, I want. You have to have action behind it pushing you forward. Anyway, so I get this DM from this guy saying you're out of nowhere. And it gets me thinking like, it wasn't just these last five years. It was everything going all the way back to when I was 18. You know, I wanted to be a pro wrestler. And on the first day of class, I'm thrown over the top rope. I hit the cement and I break my back. Um, and I come home. But prior to that, wanting to be this pro wrestler was kind of funny because I was so shy in high school. Um, teachers would come up to me and say like, hey, join, you're, you're fun, you're a funny guy, you should be on the theater team. And I was like, oh no, <laughs> I, can't, I can't get up in front of a crowd. Oral presentations in history class, couldn't do it, terrified. And yet I wanna be this guy with a microphone talking to a crowd of 20,000 people. And my mom would look at me and she would be like, are you watching these guys on Monday Night Raw? You can't even get up at assembly to say happy birthday to your friend because you're so shy of being in front of a large audience and you have goals of being the world champ, like, come on. And I was like, I can't explain it. 
Funny enough, at the school that I went to to become a pro wrestler, at the end of the day, even though I've all, I'm already very injured, I'm already in a lot of pain, they were like, all right, best part of the day, time to cut promos. And my mom is sitting in the, in the front row because it was my first day of class and she wanted to be there to support me and I wanted her there too to, to like take photos and stuff. Um, my mom must have been thinking, well, here goes this, you know, like this is gonna go up in smoke. And I don't know, can't explain it to this day, but they told me you're gonna be wrestling this guy in a ladder match this Sunday and he's the champion and you're the challenger, uh, cut a promo. And I cut a promo and after the class, the coaches came up to me and they were like, wow, that was really good. Um, and I looked to my mom as I'm cutting this promo and she's sitting there in the audience like, where's this coming from? Um, but the point is, pro wrestling taught me to be this character. Uh, even though I, I never got to actually be a pro wrestler, but just being a fan for so many years got me in that mind space. I come home, I end up working in the restaurant industry for many years where I learn a lot about people and the world and stuff like that. Um, but it wasn't until I decided that I wanted to write books that I started really like honing my craft and learning things that even though none of them really worked and you could call them all failures, I call them stepping stones, preparing me for something that you at the time I didn't know. But looking back, it's like, oh, all those things that I failed at, wrestling, failed, being a novelist or an author, writing, kind of failed. I mean, I got an LA Times review, but the books never really sold. Um, learning how to write these query letters to, to journalists saying like, hey, would you cover my book? Setting me up for today to write proposals and pitches to brands saying like, hey, would you like to work together? Uh, after the writing, I got another job writing for primermagazine.com. And that taught me even more about writing and consolidating my message. Motivated me too. And I ended up starting my own online magazine um, for minimalism. And my issue with minimalism at the time and blogs on minimalism was they were just so long. And I was like, isn't minimalism about being like short and to the point? And you go on all these blogs for minimalism, you're scrolling for pages and pages. Cut to the chase already. So that was the idea with my blog or my, my online magazine was that it was going to be very short, right to the point articles. Um, so that taught me how to consolidate my message. Hey, TikTok, right? Videos under a minute. Now you can do 10 minute videos. But when I started, it was under a minute. Um, and that magazine, e-magazine, e-zine taught me how to consolidate a long message into a very short message. And that set me up for TikTok. After that, I had an idea for a t-shirt company. And I knew the failure right away. The failure was you can have the funniest shirts in the world, but if there's not a person in front of the camera wearing the shirts and doing things and being goofy, you're not gonna sell any shirts. I didn't sell any shirts. And I, I knew it at the time. I was like, there needs to be a persona. There needs to be a character, a person in front of the camera, but it can't be me. I'm too shy, too shy. Uh, so that failed as well. And then comes TikTok. So everyone goes, oh, you, you popped up out of nowhere. No, it's been the last five years, but really, it's been going all the way back to 18, failing at all these different things across the, uh, over the period of time that prepared me for this. It's like Joe Rogan. Uh, you know, I was a fan of stand-up comedy. I'm still a fan, but I, I was a fan earlier in like high school. Um, and, and Joe Rogan was a stand-up comedian. So I would watch his things on Comedy Central. So I knew the name. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't like a huge Joe Rogan comedy fan. I just uh, was familiar with him. Like I said, I'm a lifelong pro wrestling fan. So when Brock Lesnar joined the UFC, I'd watch all the fights on YouTube. And who was in the ring or the octagon talking to him after the match? It was Joe Rogan. And I was like, hey, it's that guy. It's the comedian. Now he's doing this. So even Joe Rogan, all these things in the past, the comedy, the acting, he was on sitcoms too, I think, um, being the commentator, doing the interviews in the, in the octagon after the fight, all of this was setting him up to be this podcast guy. So when you when you see someone, I mean, it's very rare that someone actually pops up out of nowhere. Um, usually, usually there's something going on long, not even just in the five years, but long, long in the past after, before that, that's setting them up, that's teaching them things that they can then go look back at and go, oh, that thing that I thought I failed at was actually really preparing me for this which leads me to the other message I got from a follower who's become sort of a friend and writes me and he goes, I wanna do what you do, uh, but about movies. I'm a big movie fan. I wanna, I wanna have a movie like vlog, channel, YouTube, whatever. And 
I've been thinking about it and I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I think about it all the time. I wake up, I'm thinking about it. I'm driving to work. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. And I said, well, it's time to stop thinking and it's time to start doing. Why don't you do it? And he was like, yeah, I should. And he was like, my, my vision for the show is that it'll be everything movies. Movies that have already come out, like old movies, new movies, soon to be released movies, ideas for movies. I'd love at some point to have guests on the show, not in film, outside of film well-known names but not movie stars and talk about how movies have impacted them and I was like man this sounds great you should start it and he was like he was like yeah I think I will I'm gonna buy this I'm gonna buy that I'm gonna get the tripods and the cameras and the lighting and the green screens and the posters and I was like whoa whoa film a couple episodes first doesn't have to be good just film a couple episodes see if you really want to do this before you spend all the money and he was like no I want to do it I've been thinking about it for so long you're right it's time to get started so he goes out and he buys hundreds, if not thousands of dollars worth of equipment. And he's really excited about this and it's his new thing and he's gonna do it, he's gonna make the videos. And he sends me a video and he goes, here, can you watch it? And I go, sure. And I go to watch it. And the video is like 47 minutes long and totally unedited. So there's a lot of scenes uh, in, in his show where he's like, oh, you know, taking a break to drink something or he's checking his phone or he's looking at his notes or he's saying something and uh and don't worry i got his, his approval before i put him on blast here to make to talk about this um he's like looking at his notes he oh he'll say something like he'll be like and that's why this and then he goes mm, no i don't want to say that okay i'll edit this part out you know like that's how he was that's how the video presented to me and i was like you didn't edit this and he was like well i wanted you to watch it first and i was like no 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 the whole idea is that you go through the whole process. That's how you see if you really want to do this or not. This isn't just you're talking on the phone with your buddy about a movie you saw. This is a project. It takes a lot of time. And he's like, well, man, it's, this was hard. This was hard. And I was like, I know. Stick with it. But you have to do the whole process. You can't just send me a 47-minute long video that hasn't been edited. I want to see the final product. And I want to see if you really want to stick with this. I want to see if this is what you really want to do. So send it back, edit it, get it, get it final. Like this is what you'd be putting on YouTube. That's what I want to see. So he's like, all right, all right, fine. So about a week later, I'm like, hello, I'm like, get to see this thing. And he's like, man, I don't have the time. This is hard. This is hard. I was like, I was like, you've been thinking about it though. Come on. I want to see it. And he goes, you know, I have a two-year-old and I have a wife and we're trying to have time for ourselves. We're trying to have family time. I have a job. My wife has a job. Everything is so expensive. Uh, we're, we're short on time. Um, you know, do you know how hard it was to just film that 45 or 47 minute long video? He was like, I had to have an idea and notes and I had to have a thought of where this was going and it was hard and I had to film it and blah, blah, blah. And he was like, and now I had to edit it. And he was like, first I watch it back and I'll make little edits along the way. And then I have to watch it a second time to put in the green screen and the captions and funny text and stuff like that and watch it all the way through one last time to make sure it's good. So he's like preparing for it, filming it, watching and making minor edits and then watching again and making larger edits. He's like, this is like four or five, six hours. You know, he's like, I just don't have that much time. And I was like, he was like, I want this to be successful. I want it to be successful fast because this is hard and I need, if it's going to move, I need it to move quickly. And I was like, man, I hate to, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that's probably not going to happen. And he was like, well, why not? And I was like, cause these things take time. It's hard. It's hard. You know, like, I think this episode is good that you sent me, but it needs a lot of work, a lot of work. And he was like, what? <laughs> and you could just see that he was getting discouraged. And I was like, look, I'm not trying to talk you out of this, but this is a process. You know, and I told him about the DM that I got from the other guy who was like, you just showed up out of nowhere. And I was like, but you know, I haven't just shown up out of nowhere. Five years on, on YouTube. And the videos that I first started posting on YouTube five years ago were terrible. They were awful. You stick with it. You get better. You get better. You can often tell the people who are genuinely passionate about what they're doing because, um, because they stick with it. You, you, you can ask them, how long have you been doing this? And they'll tell you five years, six years, eight years. And it's like, whoa, you've really put in the time. And then you see the other side of things where people who watch these guys who are out of nowhere and they go, I want to be like that. 
And they don't realize that the Joe Rogans of the world have been doing this for 15, 20 years. Various different things setting themselves up for this, building a, a recognition, a name. I was like, nobody knows who you are yet. You know, get a Twitter account or a Threads account or a Facebook page. Start talking about the movie. Start building a fan base so that when you do get onto the videos, you've already built some sort of name, brand recognition. And he was just like, man, this is just too much work. And I was like, there's a lot of work that goes into this, though. You have to be passionate about something. You can't, he, he, he's driven not only because it's his passion and he loves film, but he looks at all these other podcasts and channels and stuff like that, and here's how much they're making. And he's got a kid, he's got a two-year-old, he's got a wife who works a job, he works a job, and he's thinking, man, if I can just become this big movie guy overnight, man, that would cover a lot of my bills. And as we were talking, and he was learning through the process of like editing and then watching and then editing and watching, and it took five, six, seven hours for him to just get the one video he was like, man, how do you do it? And, you know, a lot of this comes from, I, I saw this video on Instagram or on TikTok where the woman was saying, uh, influencers are, are a lot, you, you, you don't become rich by being an influencer. You're already rich. That's how you have the time to do this. Um, influencers uh, have, e either they have a, a stroke of humongous luck like we were talking about where they just actually do blow up overnight and they land big brand deals and they can leverage those big brand deals and invest that money and buy themselves time. Or there's years in the background going on setting themselves up for this. But the, the people who hit it massive overnight, you know, there's not that, there's not that many of them. And a lot of these people have a cushion or some sort of security. They can live with their parents or they have a high paying job and they have carved out a little bit of time to do this. Most people don't just pop up out of nowhere. Uh, there's a lot going on behind the scenes for years, if not decades, that set them up for this. And so I'm in a situation where I live very below my means. I own my home, so I'm not worried about a mortgage. I do not have kids. Uh, my partner, my girlfriend, Sarah, she's successful in her own right, so she's not depending on me. My mom has, you know, my mom doesn't need a caretaker or anything like that. You know, uh, I've got the time and I'm able to do this. I'm able to put in the time. It's hard though, if you don't have the time and you don't have the money, you definitely feel that crunch. Like this has to happen now or it's not going to happen at all. Um, and that that's hard to do, but you know, there are ways around it. Like this guy doesn't have to launch into this big, huge show today. He could put three, five years building a name. And when I say that to him, he goes, oh, no, 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 I need something that's going to be fast or I'm not going to do this at all because my job sucks, daycare is expensive, my wife wants to be a stay at home, but we can't afford it. It has to happen now. That's the wrong mindset. You have to have a passion outside of that um, to, to be able to put in the work. Nobody wants to put in three to five years of just scratching along, hoping that something happens. And if you can't afford to do that, it makes it even harder. You can't put in five years on the hope that this becomes something um, if you need stable income coming in, which is why a lot of influencers who are coming to the space are already successful. They've already built a name and now they're leveraging it through their social media or they've already got money from doing something else. So anyway, uh, I'm, you know, I'm not really sure at the end of this almost 20 minutes what the point of this video was um, other than to say, be passionate, stick with it. If you're trying to do something like this, I know this is a departure from my normal videos, um, but these things take time. Nothing happens overnight. For the vast majority of people, nobody becomes a celebrity overnight. Um, so stick with it. If you really, 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 really want to do it, you don't have to have the biggest idea right away. You can, over time, most people just, I don't think, want to do that. Anyway, thanks for watching.